All right, guys, so in today's video, we're going to be starting section 7.2. This is going to be section 7.2, day one. All right, we're going to be looking at uh, sampling distributions for a sample proportion. Now, it says, if we take a sample of Reese's Pieces, what proportion of the candies will be orange? Now, suppose a large bag of Reese's Pieces has 1,000 pieces. The manufacturer says that exactly 40% of the candies are orange. If we select a sample of 50 pieces, how many will be orange? Let X represent the number of orange candies in the sample. And so we've got a bag of 1,000 pieces, taking a random sample of 50, and assuming that 40% is orange, how many are we going to get in our sample that are orange? It says, what type of probability distribution does X have and justify? So if you think about it, we've got a bag of candies. We're taking a sample of 50. Um, and there's really only two options. You either have, when you draw uh, these candies, they are either going to be orange or they're not going to be orange. And so at the, uh, at the start, it kind of seems like it might be a binomial distribution, right? But before we can say it is, we need to check uh, the conditions to see if it actually is one. So if you remember the acronym BINS, B-I-N-S, B stands for binomial. And so if you look at it, um, you have a success option, which is where it's an orange piece. And then you have uh, a failure option where it's not orange. Okay, so it is binomial or a binary option. Um, I stands for independent. Okay, so uh, are each of the outcomes independent? Well, we're not replacing, so there's no replacement. So previous outcomes do affect future outcomes, but but um, we can check the 10% rule. So is n less than or equal to 10% of big N or less than 10% of big N, okay? So our sample was 50 and that we got to check and see, is that less than 10% of 1,000, all right? So if we look, 50 is, in fact, less than 100. So even though we don't replace, it still passes the 10% rule, okay? Uh, next one would be N, which stands for set number of trials, okay? So we have 50 pieces of candy that we're pulling out. So that one works. And then the last thing is S, which stands for same probability. So no matter what bag of candy you get, it's still 40% chance that you're going to have orange candies in there. So S passes. So that means this is a binomial distribution. All right, next uh, number two, it says, draw a sample of 50 Reese's pieces using the applet. How many pieces or orange? Repeat this five times. Write the values below. So linked on Canvas, we actually have a um, Reese's pieces uh, machine, candy machine. And inside the machine, there's a thousand candies. All right. And you can actually change the number of uh, the probability of orange, you can change, alter the number of candies, and you can look at the number of samples, right? So um, what you want to do is that on the, we know that it is a 40% chance of orange, and each of our samples have 50 pieces. So on the applet, over here where it says probability of orange, you want to make that 0.4. Number of candies, you want 50. And normally... If we were in a, a physical classroom setting, you would do this five times on your own. And then you would do, um, then as a class, we would come together and each person would share their, can their numbers that they got. Um, but since we're virtual, instead of doing five, I want you to do, say, 20. All right, so number of samples will be 20. And so uh, if I say draw samples, um, you can uncheck the box that says animation. If you want to see the animation, you can, but it just takes a while. But we did 20 samples of 50 Reese's Pieces at a time, and it counted the number of orange candies from each one of those samples. And down here below, 
it actually made a dot plot for those dis for that distribution. Okay, so each one of these dots is a random sample of 50 um, Reese's pieces. And depending on where it sits, tells you how many orange pieces there were in that box or in that sample. So uh, what I want to do, okay, it says draw a sample of 50 Reese's pieces using the applet, write the values below. Um, I'm going to skip this because we've already gotten 20 of them instead of five. And on number three, we're actually just going to create that dot plot. We're going to redraw that dot plot that we have. All right. So I've already gone ahead and made a dot plot. I kind of did a random sample of 20 of them ahead of time. And you can draw this one or you can draw the one that you're doing. Uh, your numbers might be slightly different, but this is what I got when I did it. So I had numbers ranging from 13 to 26, right? And so I've got, I'm just going to put a number line and then number it 13 to 26. So I got 13, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Okay, and so I'm going to put a dot for every single one of those samples from my sampling distribution. So I've got one on 13, one on 14, two on 15, one on 16 and 17, um, three on 18, 19, and 20, one on 21. Uh, two on 23, four on 24, uh, two on 25, and one on 26. Okay. And so last thing I got to do, give it a, um, give it a title. So this is sampling distribution. Of x okay because we called it up at the beginning we labeled it x all right so number four says what does each dot represent so remember each one of these dots are 50 reese's right and uh, reese's pieces and depending on where it sits on the number line tells you how many pieces were orange so this is uh, each one of these dots is a sample of 50 pieces and the number of orange in it. Okay. Um, so for example, if you look at this dot at 26, okay, this dot represents one sample of 50 pieces with 26 orange. Okay. And number five says, what is the mean and standard deviation for the distribution of X? Show your work. So if I'm trying to find the mean of this sampling distribution, all right, so remember we use mu as our symbol. And so this is mu of x, so mu sub x. If I'm trying to calculate the mean of this, I just take my sample size times it by my probability, all right? So the mean of this is going to be 50 pieces times uh, 0.4. Okay, because 40% of them should be orange. And so if you do that, then we're going to get a sample mean, or excuse me, a mean of this uh, sampling distribution to be 20, right? Now, if I wanted to do standard deviation, okay, so the formula is just 
mu sub x, or sorry, sigma sub x is equal to the square root of np times 1 minus p. And so if I use that to calculate this standard deviation, I'm going to get square root of 50 times 0 0.4 times 1 minus p, that's going to be 0 0.6 because 1 minus 0.4 is 0.6. And so if I calculate that, I'm going to get a standard deviation of 3.46. So I've got a mean of 20 and a standard deviation of 3.46. And now question 6 says, what is the approximate shape of the sampling distribution of x and explain and sketch below? So we have a... Uh, distribution up top here, right? Number three is a sampling distribution. So it looks to be approximately normal, right? And if you were trying to find a, a shape for the population, right, then what you can look at is large counts, okay? Remember how we have rules for large counts? And if it satisfies the large counts rule, then we can assume that the distribution is going to be approximately normal. All right, so large counts, NP needs to be greater than or equal to 10, and then N times one minus P needs to be greater than or equal to 10. So if we just check these rules, okay? So for NP greater than or equal to 10, I'm gonna have 50 times 0.4, and I'll find that that is 20, and that one is, in fact, greater than or equal to 10. And then if I do n times 1 minus p, uh, 1 minus p I'm going to get 50 times 0.6. So I'm going to get 30, and that's also greater than or equal to 10. So since I satisfy both rules, I can assume that this is going to be approximately normal. So if I look at a shape of it, it's going to look something like this. Okay, and then also don't forget, so in the middle here, we said our mean was 20. And then you also need to label it in, and then your mean and standard deviation. So we got 20, and then 3.5. Four, six. Okay, and this is really important because if you are calculating the probability of something, then you need to be able to assume that it's normal, and if it's not normal, then you can't use a normal distribution, all right? So instead of X, instead of looking at the number of orange pieces in a uh, sample size of 50, let's look at the proportion of candies that are orange, all right? So proportion, meaning we're going to look at, say, a percentage or a decimal uh, form of those candies. So number seven says, use your samples from number two and turn each number of orange candies into the proportion of orange candies in the sample p hat. Write the proportions below and add them to the second dot plot on the board. So this is referring to question number two. We skipped number two because we don't have a physical classroom where each person had five individual uh, values. We just went straight ahead to number three where we make a dot plot of them. So what I'm gonna do is each one of these dots represents the number of candies that are orange in a sample of 50. So we were talking about this example right here, 26 out of 50, okay? So if that was a proportion, 26 out of 50, that's the same thing as 0.52, right? So 52% of those candies in that sample were orange. So all I'm going to do is I am turning all of these dots into a proportion 
instead of a set number of orange candies, okay? So on number eight, I have a sampling distribution of P hat this time. So instead of having whole numbers at the bottom, 13, 14, all the way up to 26, I have proportions from 0.26 up to 0.52. And I just went in uh, two percentage increments, so 0.26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50, and 52. Okay, and so now I'm going to convert all of these values on the dot plot that we made on question three. I'm going to convert all of these values into proportions just like I did right here as this example. And so when I do that, I'm going to have dots right here. So I'm going to have one on 0.26, one on 0.28, two on 0.3, uh, one on 0.32, three on 0.36, 38, and 40, um, one on 0.42, excuse me, I need to move these over one, and then one on 0.42, Uh, two on point four six, four on point four eight, two on point five, and one on point five two. All right, and so you can actually see that both of these dot plots are the same exact thing. Both of these things are the same exact. The only thing that's different is the instead of having whole numbers at the bottom, we have proportions at the bottom, okay? And sometimes you might see these dots, instead of being represented as dots, you'd see them represented as p-hats. So this is a p-hat, this is p-hat, this is a p-hat. Um, so just be aware of that. And then the last thing you got to have is a title. So instead of being a sampling distribution of x, this is a sampling distribution of p hat okay and so number nine says what do each dot represent well instead of each one representing a sample of 50 with the number of orange pieces now they are uh, representing a sample of 50 pieces uh, and the proportion of orange candies. Okay, so for example, this one right here at 0.52, this represents one sample of 50 pieces. Um, and the proportion of orange. Okay, so this is a sample of 50 pieces where 0.52 or 52% of them are orange. Okay. And now number 10 says, find the new mean and standard deviation and show your work. So on question five, 
we found the proportion, uh, the mean and standard deviation of the distribution of x, right, where it's x represents the number of orange pieces. And so we found there's 20 orange pieces on average with a standard deviation of 3.46. And so we're basic, basically going to be using the same formula, okay, for each of these, only it's going to be slightly different to represent proportions instead, okay? So if I'm trying to find the mean of these proportions, okay, mean of the proportions, sample proportions, that is just going to be the same as our true proportion, okay? We're assuming that it's going to be the same. So if we have Uh, if we're expecting 40% of them to be, uh, to be orange, then that's going to be 0.4, okay? Another way you can look at this is that our sample proportion is going to be the same thing as, remember how on the last one we had n times p? Just divide it by uh, n. Okay, so if I look at this here, let me do this really quick. This is the same thing as uh, originally we had a sample, or sorry, a, a population mean of 20 on the last one. Just divide that by the total number of can candies you're sampling. 20 over 50 is the same thing as 0.4, all right? And that's what we expected our average to be, 40% of them to be orange. Now for standard deviation, Okay, standard deviation of p hat, that is going to be the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. And so if I were to calculate the sta uh, standard deviation for these proportions, I'm going to have square root of uh, 0.4 times 1 minus 0.4 divided by 50. And if you calculate that, you're going to get a standard deviation of 0 0.0692. Okay? Now, something to point out, originally, we had sampling distribution to be, when we were looking at the number of candies that were orange, we had 3.46. Well, if you divide that by your sample size, which is 50, you're actually going to get the same thing, 0 0.0692. So all we're doing is we're taking those values from the first page, 20 and 50, and tur turning them into proportions, all right? 20 out of 50 gives you our mean of 0.4. Standard deviation of 3.6 divided by 50 gives you the proportion of 0 0.0692. All right, and number 11 says, what is the approximate shape of the sampling distribution for p hat? Explain and sketch below. So, <clears throat> again, large counts. If I look at large counts, I know that np has to be greater than or equal to 10, n times 1 minus p, greater than or equal to 10. All right, and those values aren't going to change it's still going to be approximately normal. Okay. Only this time in the center, instead of having 20, we're going to have our proportion of 0.4. All right. And so don't forget, we got to label it in. And this time, our mean and standard deviation for the proportions, our mean is 0.4. Our standard deviation is 0 0.0692. Okay, so it's going to be approximately normal as well. Um, and number 12, it says, we know that bags of Reese's Pieces contain exactly 40% that are orange. If we select a random sample of 50 candies, what is the probability that the sample proportion will be 
50% or greater. So we already know that our distribution is normal, right? So if I resketch that, okay, I've got 0.4 right here, and I'm trying to figure out what are the odds of getting a bag that ha have 50% or greater. So here is 0.5. Okay, I'm trying to figure out what are the odds of getting a value that is at or above that. So basically the shaded region at or above that value. Okay, so remember we've got mean of 0.4, standard deviation of 0.0692. Okay, now if I'm trying to standardize that, okay, I've got real life values right here. But if I want to try and find the probability of getting 50% or more, what we can do is we can actually standardize it, okay? Use a z-score. And so if I'm trying to calculate the z-score for a proportion, the formula is p hat minus p divided by our standard deviation. And remember, our standard deviation is the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. And so I'm going to get, well, p hat, is what uh, we're calculating, 50% or greater, right? So p hat in this case is going to be 0.5. p represents our true value, which in this case is our mean, uh, which is 0.4. And our standard deviation, okay? Uh, we already calculate, calculated that to be 0.0692, all right? So if I calculate this standard deviation, I'm going to find a z-score of 1.45. And if you are looking at a table, okay, so table A, for example, uh, remember if you're using table A, table A measures everything at and below a value. So really it would be measuring all of this stuff over here on the left side. So to get to the right side, you just do one minus whatever value. So if you look for 1.45 on your table, you're gonna find that it will give you 0.9265. So to find my proportion, or my percentage, I'm gonna be looking at uh, one minus 0.9265. And so I'm going to get a probability of 0.0735. So essentially, if we know that 40% of the candies are expected to be orange, there is about a 7.35% chance of getting a bag that has 50% or more being orange. So it's not, it wouldn't be surprising to see that, but it is about 7.35% chance. All right, so some important ideas, some takeaways from this video. Uh, number one is mean and standard deviation. Okay. All right, so if you are trying to find the mean of a sample proportion, it is just equal to P, whatever your true value for the proportion is. So in this case of the orange candies, uh, we were told that 40% will be orange, so that would be 40%. Um, and then for the standard deviation, that is just equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. All right, and now just as an asterisk, this is assuming if the 10% condition is met. Because remember, we we're taking a sample without replacement, but we needed to make sure that the 10% condition was met because of that. Um, next thing, number two. Uh, a distribution is approximately normal if uh, large counts is met.
So uh, you need to show that NP is greater than or equal to 10, and then N times 1 minus P is greater than or equal to 10. And like I was saying earlier, this is important because if you can show, I'm going to go back down, if you can show uh, that a distribution is approximately normal, then you are able to calculate probabilities uh, just like we did in question 12. All right, we showed that it was normal, so we could use a z-score in table A to find the probability. And then number three, Uh, if the sampling distribution of p-hat uh, is approximately normal, If the distribution is approximately normal, then we can use that z-score uh, formula where z is equal to p hat minus p divided by our standard deviation, which was the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. All right. Performance minus mean divided by standard deviation. Okay, so those are our three learning targets for today's video. Um, we do have a little bit of check your understanding where uh, it says, according to the American Dental Association, 8% of adults have never had a cavity. A dental graduate student con uh, contacts a simple random sample of 1,000 adults and calculates the proportion P hat in this sample who have never had a cavity. Question A says, identify the mean of the sampling distribution of P hat. Okay. Well, it told us that 8% of adults have never had a cavity, okay? That represents P, all right? So this is P. This is our true proportion. Now, if I'm trying to calculate the sampling distribution, the mean of the sampling distribution, mu sub P hat, that's just equal to P, okay? So in the event of this sample, we're just going to say that mu sub p hat is 0.08. Uh, question B says, calculate and interpret the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat. Check that the 10% condition is met. Okay. So first off, the 10% condition, um, we have to show that n is less than 0.1 of big N. Now we have 1,000 adults. Okay. And it's safe to assume that that is less than 10% of all adults. Okay, sometimes you have to assume on these things um, when you're talking about large scale. Okay, so we're looking at um, adults and we would assume that it's American adults because this is the American Dental Association. Um, so it's safe to assume that 10 per, or 1,000 is less than 10% of all adults. So 10% condition is met, right? Now, if I'm calculating the standard deviation, okay, remember, standard deviation of p hat is the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. And so our standard deviation is going to be 0.8, or excuse me, 0.08 times 0.92 divided by 1,000. And so if I calculate that, I'm going to get 0 0.009. Okay. Now, uh, if I were to put this in words, if I were to describe the standard deviation or interpret the standard deviation, okay, then what I can say is the sample... Uh, proportion uh, of adults that have never had a cavity uh, 
uh, typically varies by about 0 0.009 from the true proportion of 0 0.08. Okay, so the sample proportion of adults that have never had a cavity typically varies by about 0 0.009 from the true proportion of 0 0.08. Question C says, is the sampling distribution of p hat approximately normal? Check the large counts condition is met. So if I look at large counts for this, um, remember I have to show that NP is greater than or equal to 10, and I have to show that N times 1 minus P is greater than or equal to 10. So if I calculate it for this one, I'm going to have 1,000 uh, times 0 0.08 greater than or equal to 10. So if I look at that, that's actually going to be 80, which does satisfy it. And then if I look at the other one, I'm going to have 1,000 times 0.92 is greater than or equal to 10. And I'm going to get 920. which is in fact greater than or equal to 10, all right? So because it passes both conditions, I can say that this is going to be approximately normal. All right, part D says, find the probability that the random sample of 1,000 adults will give a result within two percentage points of the true value, all right? so. I want to see, uh, I want to be within two percentage points of the true value, all right? I want to see what the probability of that is. So it, I know that my distribution is approximately normal, right? Okay, so I have 0 0.08 in the middle, because that's my mean, and I want to be within two percentage points of that. So if I go down two percentage points, I'll be sitting at 0 0.06. And if I go up two percentage points, I will be at 0 0.10 or 0 0.10. So I'm basically trying to find what percent or what are the odds of my values being between 0 0.06 and 0 0.10, okay? Now, uh, don't forget in, and then we got 0 0.08, and then 0 0.009. This is my mean and my standard deviation, okay? Now, if I'm trying to calculate this, remember we can use Z equaling P hat, minus p divided by square root of p times 1 minus p over n, all right? Now, uh, if I'm trying to get, um, calculate this for, say, 0 0.06, all right? p hat is going to represent 0 0.06 in this case. So I'm going to have 0 0.06 minus p, or sorry, excuse me, minus 0 0.08 divided by the square root of 0 0.08, or well, our standard deviation. So I'm going to have 0 0.009, which means I'm going to get a z-score of negative 2.22, okay? And you can do this again for 0 0.10, but you're just going to find that it's going to equal positive 0.22, okay? So if I'm looking at table A, for example, all right, a z-score equaling positive 2.22, all 
is going to result in an area of nine, or excuse me, point nine eight six eight, and a z score of negative two point two two is going to result in an area of point oh one three two. So basically, if you're looking at table A, okay. Remember, it measures at and below. If you value, or calculate the value for 0.06 and use table A, it's calculating everything at and below that. And if you do it again for positive 2.22, uh, it calculates at 0.10 and measures everything at and below that. So in order to get this middle value, we are just going to subtract these two values that we got here. Okay? So... I just need to be able to do 0.9868 minus 0 0.0132, and that's going to give me 0.9736. So, in other words, 97.36% of all my adults will be within two percentage points of that true value, 0.08. So there is 90, what did we say? 97.36% of my adults inside this area. Now, if you were using technology, okay, you could do normal CDF. And inside, you would have your lower bound, which is 0.06 my upper bound, which is 0.10, my mean of 0.08, and my standard deviation of 0.009. Make sure you label LB for lower bound, UB for upper bound, mean, standard deviation, okay? And you should get about the same amount. It might be slightly different, but for the most part, it's gonna be basically 97.36%. All right, and then the last one, if the sample size were 9,000 rather than 10,000, how would this change the sampling distribution of p-hat? All right, now, remember how we said on the last video, the larger your sample size, the smaller the variability, okay? So, it's not necessarily going to change the shape of the distribution. It's still going to be approximately normal, but because our variability is getting smaller, that means that our standard deviation is going to be smaller, okay? So the distribution uh, would remain approximately normal But the standard deviation uh, would decrease. Okay? And it would actually decrease to a third of its value. Okay? So to one third of the value. And the reason it's decreasing uh, one third of the value is because, remember, Standard deviation is um, on a square root level, so 9,000 square root of 9 is 3. So it would be one-third the value. So if I calculated the standard deviation now, okay, and put this in parentheses, square root of 0.8, excuse me, 0.08 times 0.92 divided by, instead of 1,000 this time, it's 9,000 you're going to get a standard deviation of 0 0.003 this time, okay, instead of 0 0.009. Um, and then the last thing is the mean. The mean would still stay the same, right? Variability will not uh, affect the mean. So the mean would stay the same. Okay, so that wraps up this video, section 7.2, day one. Uh, next video, we're going to be talking about 
Uh, day two of section two is going to be talking about do Skittles or M&Ms have more orange candies?